You want it all around? So are there 12 candles on there or more? Are you are you more than that? Well, I have an extra candle right there because I wanted to go all the way around. Oh, so it's in perfection. It's in, yeah. So it's in sync. No, candle wax got on my cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know that happens all the time, right? Yeah. Where are you going to put that candle wax? He's gonna burn it out. Okay, ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joshua. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Make a wish and blow out your candles. Woo! special day. It is Joshua's <laughs> birthday. Woo! Yay! How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. And what happened very, very special for you in the last couple of days? What has happened? I don't know. Uh, let me give you a hint. What has been happening on Twitter? Oh, uh, I gave you, you gave me birthday wishes. Lots of birthday wishes from all over the world. Yeah, right. Yes, from London, France, uh, Australia, the UK, Canada, Russia, Ireland. Um, oh my gosh, any country, Switzerland, any country you can think of, he has gotten birthday wishes from. And he's thank you guys so much. This is for uh, Twitter. What would you like to say to everybody? Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Would you like to say thank you to everybody for wishing you a happy birthday? Yeah. Say it into the camera. Thanks for wishing me a happy birthday. Yeah, there are more people. Than and there was a family from Minnesota, right? Yeah. Um, the three, the two of the two of them that means the world. So thank you. Okay. I wanted to do things I wish I knew when Joshua was diagnosed back at four years old. Things I wish that I knew at that time that I've learned since then, as, but some of these are pretty across the board that I found. I pretty much expected the diagnosis, but it was still very difficult to hear that. So it was a difficult time. And the first thing that I did was I kind of ran to every autism group online and back, uh, you know, nine years ago, it was a little different the way the groups were. Um, and it seemed like everybody knew everything about autism. So my first thing that I wished I knew was that everybody does not know everything about autism. Those parents that know everything, they really don't. First of all, you don't have to know everything. Because even if you did know everything about autism, guess what? It may not apply to your kid because our kids are all different. Autism or not, they're different. They have their own personalities. They have their own likes, their own dislikes, their own thoughts, their own beliefs. And although autism has a lot of symptoms across the board, are different. Uh, so it doesn't matter what you know about autism, you need to know your child. And that I really needed to hear that from somebody and I just kind of learned that as I went. I didn't know anything and I just started learning Joshua. Um, it kind of made a, a, a gap 
in between me and other people because I distanced myself from people because I felt like I didn't know anything and I didn't fit in. And not that parents made me feel that way, but I think sometimes autism can be a hot mess of a topic because a lot of people really have strong feelings and they want you to use the proper terms and just talking about Joshua. I'm experienced. I want people to know him and I need to teach them him. And we'll, let's just end it there and just say you don't have to know everything. Okay? Learn your kids. Know your kids. And allow yourself to feel that you're going to be learning things as you go and allow yourself to not feel like you have to know everything because I'm telling you right now, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. I'm going for my master's. I studied child development. I didn't know. I didn't know. And the doctors don't know. That's why we have all of this controversy about how does how do we get autism? How is, is it a nature or nurture? Second thing I wished I knew. ABA therapy. Dun, dun, dun. That's a hot topic, right? I think could be very, very helpful and is a very good thing to have your child go through. ABA therapy, I like on a whole. I don't like it when you have someone who does not work well with your child. And that, let's just face it, I mean, that is any doctors, any therapist, any psychiatrist, any psychologist, um, any dentist, any teacher, anybody that is in the in a professional status and you are going to them for whatever it may be, you need to mesh with that person. Your child needs to be able to learn from that therapist. And if that therapist doesn't work well with your child, it doesn't mean that your child is off or bad, and it doesn't mean that the therapist is off or bad. It just simply means you might need to find someone else. But it could mean that there is something wrong too. So I think ABA therapy and everything about it is dependent on the situation, dependent on the child, dependent on the therapist, dependent on the therapist and the child together. So maybe I'm not helping you with an answer, but my best answer is you need to listen to your child. You know, we go sit with the teachers and the therapists about what they need to be doing and about the therapy, but also listen to your child. So combined with the teacher and the therapist, and your child, the three voices together, get that input. If your child is nonverbal, listen to what they are telling you nonverbally. You guys know your kids. You guys know your kids. That's the best advice I can give on ABA therapy. It worked great for him, but we had a great therapist. And I know people that it didn't work on. And maybe it wasn't because of the therapist. Maybe it was not, it was just because they didn't mesh, not because of the therapist, because of the child. That is important. That's like a piece that's always missed, right? Like ABA therapy is looked at as it's, it's just a bad thing or that it's the best thing. But the key component to that thing cannot maneuver itself. You have to have someone in there making those skills and those trainings to your child. You have to have the vehicle to move that therapy. And if that vehicle, i.e. the therapist, is not working well with your child, or vice versa, it doesn't work. It's not because it's ABA therapy. It just, you have to, you have to mesh. That's it. So I'm only telling you from my side, only what I've learned, only what I wished I knew. And it may not even be, you know, your cup of tea. This may not even be applicable to anything that you have thought or, or will be doing, but I don't know anybody else's experience but my own, so I'm giving you that. The third thing I wished I knew about was, and this is really important, and this will continue as well, because I have a very difficult time with this. Potty training, potty training, potty training, potty training. Let me tell you, it's hard. It's really, really hard. Um, I don't know anybody I have not met one person yet that said, oh yeah, it was a breeze. Even neurotypical children, it's very, can be very hard. You do have some of those kids that just one day, just whoop, they're done, they're potty trained. No, 
it was hard. And let me tell you what I wished I knew about potty training at the time. <clears throat> I tried everything. I tried Fruit Loops. I tried Cheerios. I tried yeah. Tostitos. I tried what? Uh, don't talk about other topics. Don't, don't talk, talk about, about my birthday instead. Talk about your birthday instead. Only. Only your birthday. Yeah. Okay. So. How, right? Why do you take it forever? You okay, well, let me wrap it up then. So you still have lots of time. But, anyways. So, potty training, I tried everything. I tried the, you know, they tell you the Cheerios, they tell you that all this stuff. I would have put a marching band in my bathroom if that would have worked. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, nothing worked. What I started to pick up was he, um, when he didn't have a potty seat, because sometimes he wouldn't sit on a potty seat. He wanted to sit on the regular seat. Sitting down, first of all, trying to not have him stand up. Number one thing I would suggest with so for talk him. About other topics. Um, so we're gonna talk about his birthday in one second. So him standing up was very difficult because he stands on his toes. So sitting him down was number one solution to that. Mm -hmm. Number two solution was I needed to get a very sturdy potty chair, not just the regular little potty chairs. The baby Bajorn potty chair was miraculous with him because it sat him up it gave him he was having sensory issues to at, at all the other potty chairs but the baby Bjorn helped tremendously so it took a long time and I am going to talk about this more but it's just one of those things that I wished I knew that had I heard from other people that it is extremely hard Joshua started potty training at the age of three or four and he was finally potty trained at almost six. So he's completely potty trained now, but we do have some more to talk about with that. Well, I hope you guys liked this so far. I'm gonna continue it and we're gonna talk more. If you have any questions, please comment below, let me know. If you like this, uh, if there's anything else you wanna know, Joshua is 12 today, so we've gone through some of the big uh, it's hard ones, the potty training, the, you know, kindergarten, um, just all the different, the nonverbal, and now he's verbal and he can communicate and tell me things so I know what's going on with him better. Um, traveling, we've gone through, being away from him, um, putting him on a plane, that's going to be our next feat. So we will be talking about that, but stay tuned for more and wish Joshua a happy birthday in the comments like this video if you want him to have a very happy birthday and subscribe and have a great day right yeah and say see you later, see you later. thanks for watching you gonna piece this out